it's interesting because now my focus is on a, like now my focus is 100 percent on on great athletes getting connected to great businesses because that's what i've been going through for five years right and so the pandemic for me it's it's not over but i'm not focused on it as much right for sure. um and that was one of the cool things even about the olympics that the olympics happened you know like we're so grateful every athlete Hey, this is Sean Stringham with Game On Live Studio. We're all about helping grow the sport of water polo through understanding best practices from the perspectives of athletes, parents, coaches, and the legends of water polo. If you're looking to get into water polo or want to see water polo grow as an athlete, supporter, or coach of the game, then you should subscribe. Click on the bell and get notified every time we release a new podcast. Game On. All right, we're live here with Jesse Smith and Janai Kerr. Uh, Jesse, it's a fantastic honor to have you on the show here with us today. Obviously, you have an extensive history in the game of water polo. Uh, and just most recent accomplished was joining the five Olympics club with a uh, friend and teammate, uh, Tony Azevedo, right? And so, yep. and Team USA captain, I think as, in terms of review of your career, you've played at Pepperdine. Uh, have played internationally in both Pan Ams as well as Athena Super Finals, played professionally in Greece, Egypt, Turkey, Italy, Montenegro, um, and then graduated from Coronado High School in San Diego, where you continue to live in San Diego. I'm not sure if you're in on Coronado or not, but I do know that you have five kids and you're also in the five kid club. So you share that with me. So like five kids, five Olympics, I can only be on one of those, right? I and feel then, completely inferior with only three kids. <laughs> three kids, three kids for Janai, but I gotta uh, step up my game. <laughs> and then also just recently had the published an, an author and published of a children's book, Wally the Water Polo Walrus. So uh Jesse, welcome to oh, the wow. game on Thanks. Water Polo Pod. Thank you very much, Sean. Thanks, Janai. That's a great intro. Uh you hit everything. Yeah, that's uh that's what I've been doing for 20 years, working with uh some amazing athletes, some amazing coaches try to uh, help the U S get a medal, help, uh, help our team win has been the goal and just finished up in Tokyo. Uh, I mentioned on our pre uh, pre briefing that uh, I've been working full time. And so, so life continues, you know, it seems like yesterday, the game st- we're over and, uh, right. and here we are, it's already October. So um, at the time of recording this, so I'm very, very happy to be here. And uh, I saw some of, some of the work that your company was doing with uh, broadcasting JOs, yeah. which uh, I think you guys did a great job in a couple of parents had mentioned that you could watch them streaming online. So I thought uh, I wasn't sure who had done that. And uh, so that's some feedback for you guys. Apparently you did a good job. I, I, I felt we did a good job. I was, Janai was a, was a, did some color color on some of the championship games and we had a ton of fun. It was, it was a great. And that during junior Olympics was kind of when I had that thought of like, Janai and I work pretty well together. This is pretty fun. And like, it would be fun to talk. To. He has a little bit wider network of people in the water polo world than I do, but I have the microphones. So it works out that way. <laughs> you actually shipped the microphone, this microphone right here to Kauai for me. I have a full little mini game on live studio set up here at the house. There you go. Oh my gosh. There you go. I am jealous. It's not bad here in San Diego today though. Sean, where are you at? So I, I live in Salt Lake city, Utah. Uh, okay. and so, and work here with Olympus. So I was, as I was getting ready for the podcast, I do have one thing of feedback for your Instagram bio. You have to upgrade to, you're now a five-time Olympian. It only says, thank you. Times. That is very, I, I will go do that. Thank you. <laughs> and you have to put an asterisk in there because you had to train for a whole nother year Extra with COVID. Year. Extra wow. year. So you went five, five <laughs> plus Olympics. Thanks. You know, the funny thing is I, yeah, I've been, uh, I love connecting with all the water polo community. I think that's one of the coolest things, which I love about Janai is how uh, how approachable he is, even though he's a successful Olympian and a great coach and he has other side businesses. He, he is so approachable for little kids. And uh, there's, so many, there's so many water polo fans out there and it's a small sport. So sometimes we don't realize that it actually is like a pretty big market, like 100,000 kids. That's still a lot of kids that are into a sport that you're doing really well. And so uh, it's really cool to see how approachable he is. And I've tried to actually emulate that and so, you know, I've always looked up to Janai and uh, we went to the Olympics together and trained on the national team for many years. So and uh, alumni games and alumni games from Cornell. <laughs> yeah. So I've always looked up to you, Janai. So I'm very thrilled to be here talking with you. The funny thing is, did you check out my LinkedIn? Because I've been so active on there. I thought you were going to talk about that and be like, hey, slow down on there. 
do I'm I'm a LinkedIn guy. I will do LinkedIn next for sure. I love okay. LinkedIn. Okay, so. but I haven't updated Instagram because I've been only on LinkedIn. Because like <laughs> that's the journey, the journey that I've been in and all the other athletes, and Janai went through it as well, is that uh transitioning, it's it's amazing to learn what all your friends actually do, you know. Because we're all right? we all yeah. know each other from water polo and sports, but it's the same thing with your company, Sean. Is I was so excited to see that you, you know that you're not just podcasting and, and sharing information, you're also sharing content for uh for parents that that's that's really cool so let's yep. dive into it I, I won't distract anymore let's no, go no no distraction well i think the very first question that i had was that it's i think it's awesome that you and janai have been teammates and i think that bond of, of teammate brotherhood right is very very important and i'm sure you guys have some stories to tell right i mean i think that there's that that's maybe another podcast one way or the other but I would love to how, hear how you're reflecting on being a five-time Olympian, right? I mean, that is, that's been a huge part of your life since, uh, and Janai had shared before, like yeah. 2000 when you started training. So I you mean, started training when he was in high school. Yeah, yeah. as 21 that's, years old. And so you like- No, uh, it's funny because you mentioned Tony earlier and uh, Tony has always been like a legend in our sport. And uh, I had an opportunity to talk to him. He came and actually talked to our whole team uh, two years ago. Uh, before the pandemic even and he, he was talking to us and um i think that learning from people that go before you is such a, a pivotal thing that right. that successful people do and uh someone recently asked me you know do great players make great coaches and uh and i was all, i was i was really thinking about that because i think in our sport a lot of great players do make great coaches because people have so much passion and love right. uh, for what they're doing and and then you know it's not always true in other sports. Like our community is special, like water pool people, like it's, it's like a cult. So, right. so I, I just, uh, I think it's funny, you know, talking about Janai, like, cause Janai is a great coach. That's what, that's why I was thinking about this stuff. And, uh, you still, you're still coaching, right? Janai, are you doing that? Yeah. Start, start Kauai water pool. Oh, We're actually going the sport on the opposite bring side of the, 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 the islands. Exactly. Yes, that's, cause you know, I was born in, I was born in, uh, in uh, Kailua in Oahu because my dad's in the military and uh, we were stationed there. And so I, I have some connection to Hawaii. We still have some family and friends there actually recently, uh, right before Olympics, we were there and I connected with some, some, uh, former Pepperdine, uh, a volleyball player specifically. And I got hooked up with, with some Scott sandals. So, uh, <laughs> have you seen those around town tonight? Yeah. Scott's. And then your, your former and my former high school coach, Randy Burgess lives in Kailua now. Oh, that's right. That's great. That's right. Have you seen him recently? I'm trying to get over to actually do a clinic with him. He's as much as he's retired, he's starting a whole nother age group feeder high school program all over again in oh, yeah, Kailua. Tell me when the dates are those, uh, those, the campers, I'll have to send him an email. <laughs> we'll, we'll get you out as a special guest. <laughs> okay, Sean, back to you. We took it away for a second. No, that's fine. So I'm just curious in terms of the Tokyo games, did that extra year after that much time given into given to the sport, was that hard for you, especially with a family of five and, you know, I'm sure a very supportive wife. How did, how did that play out for you? That's a great question. Um, and the, the last year before Olympics, it was definitely tough for everyone I talked to that was, that was trying to make the games. And, uh, you saw that with some amazing performances and some, some topsy turvy performances at the games, right? Like right. not everyone performed how they were expected to and uh, at a much greater rate than other games. So that year for me personally, um, you know, I did everything I could to prepare and I have a lot of experience playing abroad. I played in Europe for 10 years. Um, so, so I made it through and uh, I felt really good with the amount of effort and work that I put in like smart work, not just right, uh, right. You know, hitting our head against the wall, but, and I had an amazing amount of support. Uh, I think all the U S athletes did from, from the USOPC, from USA water polo, from, you know, neighbors and friends. I ended up training with a, with a Navy seal here in town, uh, because he was a block away and happened to be back here because he was stationed. And so I won't mention him because he's still active duty, but uh, you know, provided me with not only amazing team mentorship uh, points to, to where, where I'm going as a captain on our team as, as a leader and as a person right. in life, but also like the physical, like, Hey, we got to hit this. We got to go. I'll work out there with you. Cause you need partners, you know, and the U S athletes, all of us went, went to Europe to play. And so, um, so it was a little bit different environment for us. Yeah. But the, the year, I mean, an example was I had, uh, 
Well, I mean, does that answer your question? Yeah, or do you totally. Want to... okay. No, that, that's fantastic. I actually want to elaborate on even more because a majority of our men's national team athletes went and trained and played professionally in Europe versus this yeah. is one of your first years off. So I think yeah. you actually had to overcome a bigger obstacle of staying motivated, staying in shape mentally and physically, quote unquote, on your own. Yeah. And that's why you're able to find the resources around you, even outside of the traditional water polo players. You know, uh, one thing we, that's, yeah, thank you, Janai. One thing that uh, I, I had a tentative agreement to go and one obstacle that I only shared with our coaches and uh, with our admin was that one of my, one of my kids got really sick uh, during COVID. It was out for a month before even we knew what COVID was. Right. And uh, the doctor, the only thing they said is like, hey, just don't get COVID again or get it the first time. We, don't, we didn't even know. We didn't, they weren't testing kids at that time. And I think sharing it now is, is part of the, the journey of like moving through and like debriefing Olympics. But I didn't tell a lot of people that. And it's still personal, but it's, it's fair to put that in the water polo community. Um, and that was one major factor in me not, not going to play early. And then I had an opportunity to go play on a Greek team later. And then, uh, and then actually like visa work and stuff like that, just it fell through. And so... Uh, I was going to play on the same team that Alex Wolf played. And he also, like the Greek League, they had this crazy thing happen where the second half of the season just got – it didn't exist. And so he only played one game uh, or two games for them as well, even though he was over there. And so I was supposed to go play that second half, and it just didn't happen. Right. So dealing with that unknown, like also it was really tough because all water polo coaching was was canceled, right? And that's how we make a, a, our income, our livelihood is is coaching or doing camps. And unless you have a side business or you're doing other stuff, but the, uh, yeah, it was, it was very interesting. So, uh, I appreciate that. And I think that our coaches knew how much of an effort I put in. I mean, uh, a lot of my neighbors, like in different ways supported us and it, it was pretty cool to see the community kind of galvanize and like support my Olympic dream. Right. So, I mean, I think in terms of that overall journey, I think one of the, one of the things that resonates with me as, as be, having five kids as well is that you're obviously committed to your five kids, right? And you're trying yeah. to balance this Olympic experience that you have going with it. And like mm -hmm. huge shout out to your wife and kids because, you know, even as a regular water polo, Good coach, me. <laughs> right? You're off to tournaments, you're here and there. How great was it to come home from Tokyo and just say, okay, I'm home. Like, it's nice to see you. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny because I started working right afterwards and uh, I got a great opportunity. So it was a little bit of a different transition because- yeah. It was almost, I mean, that's just how it had to happen. And I was so grateful that it happened that way. Um, but because of that, it's been a continual, like, I feel like I'm still in that kind of like competitive environment right. where it's like, Hey, we got to go. We got to go. It's not over. Um, and I think I actually, from talking to other alumni uh, and, and Olympians is that, that I, maybe I'm really fortunate that I have that and that I have that experience um, and I'm working for a startup and, and there's a lot of hats to wear and there's so many learning opportunities. And you mentioned LinkedIn before. It's like that. I read something on there. Ironically, I read, there's so much good knowledge that people want to share, but it's like, if you're learning and getting paid well, then it's like, you're in the best world, you know, Ever, best yeah. opportunity you can be. So like, yeah, usually you have to balance one of the two and uh, I'm thrilled at the opportunity I have. And, uh, and it is, so it has been like talking about that, like coming back to see the family was amazing. Um, and, and, uh, but it has felt like, like this, uh, right. I'm sure that, that you guys never stop either. Right. I mean, I feel like everybody, nobody is stopping right now. There's such so many things happening there. It, it is not, it is not stopping. And like, uh, it's been an amazing year for me personally, as well as with game on live studio, but it, like you're moving forward and you're just constantly trying to find the next thing. And like, I'm yeah. super excited. I'm very excited. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to go do our first college game. We're going to be doing UC Davis and Pepperdine. How about oh, no, that? No, no, no. UC that. Davis. So yeah. uh, that's going to be pretty legit. Hopefully we'll, we'll be able to get some, uh, get some additional college games as well for, for goals. So we're excited about that's that. That's really cool, Sean. Hey, by the way, this is so funny because I have my blurred background on and I think it makes my head look even bigger than it. I may have a big head, but this thing is really making it look <laughs> even bigger. Did you guys mess with my setting, Sean? Are you guys? I did, you guys I did not mess with your setting. Jesse, I'm actually gonna give you a compliment, man. Because five kids, five Olympics. I don't see any grays. I see a full head of of flowing blonde hair. You're looking. Only the big man. head back in there. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did tell him that. I think when you first came out in high school, you were actually the the biggest player 
on the team when Rocco was first coaching us? Oh, I mean, biggest enthusiastic, most enthusiasm you mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so is is Wally, uh, Wally the Walrus, uh, loosely based on you? Are you the Are you the oh, Walrus? Oh man, Wally, Wally the Walrus. You know that story. It's so cool. It came uh, the very. I won't pitch that thing right now, but the very short version of it is just. Um, I told my kids that story, and it almost like evolved with them. And yeah. uh, and it's so cool because our neighbor, one of our neighbors, moved in in a military family, and the wife was a collegiate swimmer, and she didn't have that much. Uh, awareness of what water polo was and i and i was man we got to get something to kind of communicate to people what our sport is right and some of the stuff out there is, is pretty dry you know it's not right <laughs> so for kids like even explaining to my kids and like their friends like what it was when we my my oldest son went to kindergarten in greece and two of our friends because we were part of the olympiakos sports club uh because i was playing for them and so all of our friends were from Olympiacos. So we got to know, you know, football, soccer players, basketball players. We got to know the other sports, volleyball. They have so many sports. And, um, and even explaining, they all knew, but like, it would have been cool to be able to explain to their kids right. what it was, you know, especially if you come from the UK or if you come from uh, where, where uh, maybe like Egypt, they have water polo. Actually, I played in Egypt no, too. Did you get any, that on my list? I did. Any of the non-traditional, any of the non-traditional, um, you know, countries that are traditionally playing water polo, you see at the yeah. Olympics. Yeah. Um, so that's, I mean, it's, it's just cool to get it out there. And uh, it actually is funny because uh, my network uh, pre bought the book and I was really bad about like delivering it because we had, I was trying to save a couple bucks and had a misprint and like huh? just oh, no. totally blew it. And they were mostly pretty patient. And now that I'm dealing with tons of entrepreneurs and business owners, like I was like, wow, I really did a bad job. And so if you're seeing this, you haven't received your book, please email me. But most of them got out there. And, Actually, uh, I think I'm one of them. Have you not got your book? <laughs> I might have moved though. So that might be an issue. Yeah, I'll that's, send on, that's on you, Janai. Yeah, yeah there, that, that actually, it's funny. One of my friends did move and uh, he was like, you got to send it to this other address. Like, oh man. But the, uh, I'm trying to change it now. I'm still, I'm like a one man show. It's on my website. It's, you know, I'm publishing it myself, but now I have, I have a friend in San Diego that does it. And he like, he helped me like look through and cause we want to like make it better. So we've gotten actually a lot of feedback from people because even though it's like my story and water polo, you asked if Wally is, is me. I, I think that it's not, it wasn't really like me, it, right. but water polo, like all athletes are the same, you know, like yeah. learning how to tread water is tough. Like getting in cold pools is tough, but <laughs> learning day. to swim is tough, but how much easier is it with a little ball? You jump in there and you're floating around your buddies. If you can stand, you can practice kind of jumping off. Yeah. And with a ball that makes swimming easier. Cause it's something like to look at and to focus on and you can pass it. And it instantly is easy to do because you can do that. Right. Even if you can't swim very well. So Long well, story short, that, no, I, I'm not Wally. You're not Wally, but I think from a, a sport growth point, there, we're all we're Wally. We're all we're Wally. Saying, we're right? all Wally. <laughs> we're all Wally, right? But be, I think we, and that's what one of the things I've been working on is if we can do a better job of telling the story of water polo, right? I yeah, mean, even here, even here in uh, Salt Lake City at the top of the mountains, right? If getting kids in the water, I can, yeah. I tell parents all the time, like, you give me a week. If I haven't made a convert, I haven't done my job. You know what I mean? Like. They get in and I've got splash ball kids. All I didn't the know time. you were in sales. I didn't know. So if you give you a convert in a week, huh? That's yeah, amazing. here we go. Yeah. Like of, well, at least of an eight-year-old yeah. that wants to learn yeah, how to play tough. water polo. No, it's really <laughs> tough. I, I Janai so. and I both will agree with you. It's really tough because I did a great job with a splash ball initiative at USA water polo. And like, yeah, I went to Atlanta and I went to Portland and I went to Texas everywhere trying to help kids get it, get it. And, uh, and it takes a really devoted coach to kind of get that principle. Right. The only thing I wanted to focus back on. So Janai, you haven't read my book. I read it online, a little flip page. Oh man. You can do it digitally. Oh, yeah. Man. Oh, I just man. haven't been able to Unbelievable. feed it. Unbelievable. I'm calling you out. This is great. Oh, yeah. I'm the one who ordered it. I probably pre I pre ordered it, buddy. It's at your other house. Yeah. Oh, um, go, touching back a little bit Put on even playing Olympia. Your credit card. <laughs> going back, going back to. Put your credit pay. card in the chat. I'm Apple get... Pay. Apple Pay. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I got it. Let's try it. Put it up there. <laughs> um, going back to like Olympiacos and playing because not everyone could be a five-time Olympian, let alone a one-time Olympian. But I've found as a coach, right, you can find a place to continue playing. Everybody's got an opportunity to even create a club team in high school. There's over 350 club teams at the at the collegiate level, but then beyond from that. 
if you don't make the national team, you can play masters. You can go and play in Australia, New Zealand, um, Italy, division one, division two, division three. So will you share with some of our listeners and viewers, um, a little bit more about that process of transitioning to continue to play water polo at, I don't want to say a higher level, but at the next level. Okay. That's a, that's an interesting question. I don't know if I'm the best person because, uh, well, just I'm give me your, your, own, your own personal perspective on it. Oh, my perspective on it. Yeah. Um, I would agree with you. I'd say that yes, because I've met a lot of people that love water polo in different ways. They're still involved. Um, so I would say that's accurate. I think that, um, back to the point of like what water polo is, is it's really just a game and you can find ways to play a game in an, in a variety of atmospheres. Ours is constrained by, you need a body of water, but I've seen a lot of water polo played in, in beaches and lakes in, you know, backyard pools. And it doesn't look like the Olympics, right. But a lot of sports don't look like the Olympics, right. you know, but uh, when they're played every day by kids. And so, yeah, I mean, I think that the answer to your question is, is you just need to get a, you need to get a ball that floats and you need some kind of goal. And uh, so I think that there is, there is a lot of uh, opportunities as far as like team opportunities that, that mirror, the Olympics or high level college, I think that that's less. I would disagree. I'd say that's less. Oh, available. no, I'm sorry. I wasn't saying that mirror the Olympics, the polar opposite, just oh. ways to continue staying involved. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. So, yes, the way you do that is um, you just find two other people and you can start a club. I mean, um, there's a great example of like Atlanta, Atlanta water polo uh, a long time ago. Gosh, in like 2000 eight or nine, uh, my good friend, our friend, Dougie Mann, uh, moved to Atlanta and I had, we drove out there with him and we connected him, uh, through the, the internet with a master's program there, Dinamo water polo that Stuart Sheldon, uh, big stew. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, those guys were so welcoming and to see the development in that community, they might even have high school water polo now in Georgia over a 20 year do. period. I they mean, do. I went to the state yeah. championships. Uh, okay. Two so, years ago. so 13 years. So 13 years, I mean, pretty cool, pretty cool. And uh, another example with, that just right off the top is Austin, Austin. They had the spin lob competition, which is uh spin lob is a fun thing in water polo where you throw the ball, the spin and as it moves through the air and you throw it in an arc, like a lob. And as it, as it moves through the air, it kind of, it kind of curves a little bit. And kind of like in, in soccer or right. what is it, what's another example? Bandit. So, so it's pretty cool. So it's that it's a fun tournament, you know, and uh, that just got, I think, thrown together by the uh, master's program, the or the, sorry, the club program of uh, A&M down there. Longhorns. And, uh, which one? Longhorns, Texas Longhorns. Longhorns. Sorry. Wrong, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Texas Longhorns. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's like cool stuff and a lot of opportunities to play. I think if you're, Yeah. And so, the, the, the Texas Longhorns 10U team actually won JOs um, yeah, in Texas, in, Texas. In, Dal yep. in Dallas. Oh, wow. That's cool. That's cool. Is there anyone from Texas on here? Any, any listeners from Texas? They I will guess. be. They will be. Yeah, for now, for sure. So, so in terms of your international play, like Greece, Egypt, Turkey, Italy, Montenegro, did, do you have a favorite place or can you rank them in, you know, or is there one no, that's like more unique good. than the other? I, I loved, we had, so we got so lucky uh, with the people that hosted us there and, uh, and the combination of, of getting paid to play water polo uh, and with the immersion in the culture, it, it was really a fantastic experience. And, uh, and I also got an opportunity to learn about international business. Cause you know, yeah. I, I negotiate all my own contracts. I was in, I was in charge of, of making sure that my customer of the team was happy. And uh, man, it was tough to, to maintain those with the stress of sports. And I understand why players have agents. Yeah, right. What What's water polo in Egypt like? Oh, it was really cool. Um, a great guy brought me down there that had some connections with UCSD. Mm -hmm. And uh, I played on the Jazeera uh, water polo team and they're based on this island, Zamelik. I don't, sorry my pronunciation, but uh, really cool. Uh, they, they actually have a pretty strong league where, you know, the younger players go to school and they practice at night games are on Saturdays and uh, older players go to work and they practice on night. Most, most weekdays. And then, uh, you know, play games and they have four teams, which are actually pretty good. Um, each team usually brings one to two foreigners. It was actually really cool seeing that higher level of water polo. Uh, I didn't expect it to be so good, but it was, it was really challenging, uh, 
competitive atmosphere. Cool. One of the uh, I wanna, Sean, let go me ahead. ask going back to because you know as athletes that are younger are getting started and, and progressing, it's mostly support from their parents. But as a parent, it's mostly now support from your wife and being fluid and flexible and supportive of going to all these different countries. What um, has helped your and Brittany relationship as you travel the world? You know, it's funny. I just, uh, I can answer that question uh, because I just gave a, my first professional speech at an accounting conference two weeks ago in New York. And it's crazy how it was about teams and teams. You, what you just said exactly like my wife and I are team same way that your family or team, like even the yeah. kids get in on that. Right. Totally. And I came up with the funniest thing. It's very short. I'm not going to pitch it. The cat gets the rat. And I learned that methodology from Brian Alexander, our sports psych. So you can tell him that, that, that acronym, that style of, of teaching short cats, getting the rat. You can imagine that, right? Super easy character, accountability, transparency gets the results you, you want because it gets the actions you need to create trust so that you can, you can trust the process. And, uh, so I would answer your question using that because it seems like in a lot of businesses and in sports teams and in relationships, having character, acting with character, being accountable for your actions and acting with transparency. Wow. It really gets you what you want. Um, so I think for, for, for me, that would be the overarching thing. And then the other thing I heard that I didn't come up with, but I heard from someone else, one of our community members uh, at work is they said that. They, they want to create a business where they don't feel like they need to take a vacation away from. And there's a lot of nuances to that, but like sports and, and relationships, you got to feel like you don't have to take a, a break from them, uh, which yeah. is tough to do long-term because everything is a commitment, right? It's hard, but I, I think that's my answer is that, you know, stay committed and, and be transparent and have character and be accountable. Very cool. Well hey, said. I think a cat getting a rat. <laughs> one of the uh, one of the <laughs> elements that I did always... not expect that, huh, and I, you guys shocked me. Not ready for Actually, that. So, <laughs> but, you were not ready. Brian, Brian Alexander, the the national team sports psychologist and our former teammate at times, um, is actually out here visiting in Kauai. He's can't you can't see, but he's about six properties down that way. <laughs> we, maybe you should just text him, have him come over. He could join. You know, he could join in right now. He'd be a great person to interview. He is. He's amazing. I would recommend anyone to work with him. He is very, very talented, uh, very, very amazing sports psych, and also a good uh, mentor and person to talk to. Very cool. So, what, Jesse, one of the things that has always impressed me the most about you is just your genuineness, uh, <laughs> and and your and your and I think you know you had made that of trying to uh, model that after Janai, and that's one of the reasons that I really enjoy working with Janai as well. But one of the things that I think illustrates that is that during lockdown, you reached out the pandemic lockdown, you reached out to clubs all over the country and said, Hey, if you want to have a zoom with Jesse Smith, like, let's just schedule it. I mean, I know that Olympus <laughs> took advantage of that. I would love to know, like, how many of those did you end up doing? Uh, I was tracking them for a while and then I, I, I stopped. I probably did two to three a week. Um, wow. but over, you know, it was really cool about our community is that at, I think I was one of the first people to kind of like implement that where, where I was. It's crazy. Just, I think we, we did it simultaneously. Yeah. Cause <laughs> what happened was Janai is that after that, a lot of people were willing to like, everyone realized I, not, not that I was, or that you were like the cause of this, but everyone realized because we, I think we have a good, great group of people in our sport uh, and other sports that you can see this too, but there's just a lot of outreach. And so the demand for me personally, like, I mean, we're all pretty similar in what the message that we give as coaches, I, I believe at least right. that, you know, it's like, stay positive. Like, for example, that thing I just mentioned, the cat gets the rat. Like that's not, that's not new, right? Like everyone knows that character accountability and transparency is a good thing to do. Right. Um, but, but the way we deliver messages is a little bit different. So uh, some groups resonate with others. And, and I, I think that Janai and I work really well with, with kids that don't have a lot of experience in the sport. Um, whereas other people prefer to work with like really experienced youth players and like they can help them as well. Like there's just different sides of what we as coaches prefer. Right. Um, and that's why I think it's great tonight. You're starting water polo in, in Kauai, or there might be some other water polo there, but you're building it. I think that's really cool. And you'll be great at that. What, what were some of the themes of those that came out, uh, as you talked to different clubs, or was there any kind of common theme across the country of, 
you know, Gosh, here's here's the messages good question. that like, John, I mean, that's yeah, like that's, gra- that's grassroots stuff right there from a sport growth standpoint of like, what are the challenges that are facing clubs out there? Every That's a great question. Um, everyone was really focused on, okay, actually, like I was really focused on creating connectivity during those calls mm-hmm. and I wasn't getting, I think the questions were were pretty bland. You know, it wasn't like, and the feedback that I gathered was, was not so constructive for what you just said about growth for the sport uh, because it was the pandemic, which was like, it's going to be over. You know, this is yeah. going to change. Right. Um, however, if I had thought about it beforehand, I would have done a better job, you know, asking questions because I think that I did try to ask, I and mean, you know, I tried to ask questions of the kids to kind of get a feel for where they were at so that I could, yeah, yeah. I could connect them. But it's interesting because now my focus is on a, like, now my focus is hundred percent on, on great athletes getting connected to great businesses because that's what I've been going through for five years. Right. And so the pandemic for me, it's, it's not over, but I'm not focused on it as much. Right. For sure. Um, and that was one of the cool things, even about the Olympics, that the Olympics happened, you know, like we're so grateful, every athlete, every athlete was so grateful for all the hard work that the U S Olympic committee, that the Tokyo committee, that every country, I mean, a lot of volunteers putting in some amazing commitments uh, against, you know, in the backdrop of some pretty phenomenal obstacles. And right. so, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't have an answer though to your question. Sorry. Okay. I mean, that's fine. yeah, well, I, maybe if it, I, let me think about it, ask me the next question and I'll think about it. At, so, uh, so another, another one of the, like, I, one of the questions that I'm going to try to dwell on with a lot of their guests of what are the things in water polo that are going great? Like, these are the things oh. that we need to keep continuing to focus on. And what are some of the things in the culture of water polo or in the game that we could do without or improve on, right. As a, as a, Ooh. as a group. That's a big a question community. too. That's a yeah. very big, big <laughs> question. So Janai, start, what, what start do you with think? The positives. I'll let start you with the positives. Yeah, what start do you think? Wait, wait, Janai, what do you think is going great in water polo right now? I think the geographic growth is phenomenal because traditionally, especially on the men's side, it's been a California Olympic team rather than a national yeah. Olympic team. So the fact that we're getting high level training, high level athletes, high level competitions um, throughout the country now is going to only broaden our reach. I mean, so that's even, the number you got, one thing. got an athlete from the mountain zone on the Olympic team. Come on. I feel good about that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's all you got. Give me more. Oh, I, got Give me more. I got a lot more. Give me um, more good stuff. I'm writing down um, notes. The online education, right. Even with COVID as it being as disruptive, it was for physical contact and practices. Oh, they've been able to reach out to five time Olympians and get yeah. their perspective, like from people right. like yourself. Okay. Um, the, the resources online with USA Water Polo yeah. looking at videos or tutorials of this is that how the development program good. is yeah. doing things. And you can that visually watch really a kid or yeah. a national team athlete doing perfect examples. Yeah. Um, yeah. What do you so, think about, Janai, what do you think about as far as growth and good stuff going on about ODP and how I think that that might be a component of how the U.S. Olympic Development Program, because I use that Atlanta example and I've gone out there for a couple of times. Uh, they're doing a pretty good job of kind of like getting exposure of, of standardized times and drills to, to around the country, or at least more coaches are like getting involved in that. Do you see other things that are really impacting that, that growth factor? I think that makes it easy and replicable. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, you see, you know, Tony's six, eight programs with, with Maggie as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it's funny because I've never really coached that style, but it's something that you can duplicate, right? Um, but for me personally, you you can't experience the Jesse enthusiasm, the joy of water polo in life, unless you have a one on one, you know, right there. But oh, the next be- the next <laughs> best thing is to have a standardized one size fits all for okay. the general masses. But I think as people get more and more involved and engaged, there has to be consistent high level competition and i think those peers are what's going to actually propel each other to the next level right yeah. coming from a small island like coronado you yeah. saw lane Bobby, you saw jeff new and yeah. and you know the other yeah. guys reaching yeah. to those levels so you knew it was p- possible yeah and then they came back for competitions you know yeah. same thing for you at pepperdine and then yeah. national team being in california you don't have to travel very far sean yeah. you have a few club teams in salt lake but a yeah. lot of your competition was driving 
you're in the vans, right? In to, the vans. to Reno or to back to California. So I think as you get these standardized groups set up, then they can create elite competition, unique experiences and yeah. grow from those. Yeah. I'll build, I'll build on that too, because that's a, one thing I, I think that's really fascinating about our sport is the diversity of coaching styles uh, mm -hmm. as you go across the U S and I've noticed that as you bring a standardized program or as like you bring that, what you're talking about, like that replicatable, I can't, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Sorry. You're gonna have to edit that. That works. But, that works. but uh, as you, pr as you produce that style of something that can, that can take it and, and pass it to many people at once past like the online coaching and all this stuff, the coaches have picked up on that too. And I'm so impressed by the strengths that they have unique strengths for them. And then they've taken this body of knowledge that's available from Yosa water polo from other, like you mentioned, other, other areas and, uh, and kind of just brought their game up. And, and I'm always, I always learn stuff from the coaches when I go on those things and you'd be, that's surprising a little bit because I've been in the sport for a long time. And, um, and even just that life, like they're, they're lifelong learners and that's good to have in a coach, you know? And I, I think that that's a really positive thing is that a majority of like high, high percentage of the coaches that I'm interacting with at a national team as a representative of the national team as an ambassador kind of style person, right. Uh, impressed me. And so it's, I mean, it's always easy to say negative things. And sometimes our sport, because it's small, has that, like where it's like a lot of talking uh, that isn't productive, isn't, isn't growth oriented. Um, but man, I'm really been impressed with the growth. That's one thing to answer your original question, yeah. Sean. And then the second thing listening to Janai is that um, I think there's a huge, huge opportunity uh, to teach a lot of kids, a lot of kids to swim through water polo. Oh, yeah. And Janai bringing it back to that. Uh, sorry, I have one of my kids' pencils right here, but uh, <laughs> so it's all it's all broken. And I don't know what happened to the eraser. Probably someone ate it. But the, uh, um, the I love you, Jesse. The <laughs> opportunity to tie that in to teach a lot of people to swim through a game, so it's fun and it's not scary. Because I'll tell you, jumping into the deep end is scary for a kid, even if they're a, a swimmer. You know, yeah. even if you're a, you've been swimming and you're trained at swimming and you have to go take a lifeguard test to pass the quote unquote deep water test. I don't know if they still use that, but to jump in, that's, you know, that is difficult. And so if you can make it fun to teach kids, um, huge opportunity for USA water polo. And I think they're stepping up to that. Um, I know John Abdu, uh, the chief performance officer has been involved in that. And I think Janai, you might be involved in that too. I'm not sure who now or do is doing what, but uh, I love to volunteer my time for that. And I've talked to a couple of people randomly about it. Um, if any readers or listeners, sorry, listeners to this want to connect on like a volunteer effort for that, like reach out to Janai and he'll <laughs> connect you to me. <laughs> no, that's fair enough because this is, this has been a life passion of mine long before I was involved officially with USA water polo. I've done camps in non-California states since the nineties. And Jesse and I have done stuff together. And I would say that not one of my camps has been identical because you have different levels of athletes, different styles of coaching, different yeah. facilities. Yeah. Um, you know, we've done stuff in the shallow one. We've done stuff with noodles. We've done stuff, you know, people hanging on the wall. Uh, one of my yeah. favorite splash ball clinics was with Ashley Johnson's younger sister, Chelsea Johnson. And if it wasn't for her, we wouldn't have been able to do the clinic because she's got ridiculously strong legs from playing two meters at Princeton. Yeah. She had two or three kids on this arm two or three kids on this arm because they didn't have noodles. <laughs> they had yeah. a pick up a ball, shoot it. She'd rotate yeah. for the other kids to take a turn. Oh, right. Yeah. You can't, you can't script a practice like that, but yeah. I bet you they left with a volunteer smile. make it happen with the, I bet you passion. they left with a big smile yeah, and they had a positive smiles. and they said, Hey, I want to try that again. And, uh, and they have a splash ball going now. Yeah. That's, that's pretty special. That's all awesome. they, and they will come. And what I love about cap seven is these, easy inflatable courses so i'm gonna change it to inflate it and they will come and inflate it and they will come well and cap <laughs> and for our splash program splash ball program we bought the little uh splash ball belts like do you throw on the, you throw in on the new swimmers and they like help you swim and they help you egg beat it's like fantastic it's like good stuff I, I'm, I'm only laughing because i think it's phenomenal for the pool my he just turned four but my three-year-old 
was trying to use it for body surfing and waves <laughs> bigger than him. And so he's going upside down, looking like a duck, like feet up in the air with a little belt floating him up. But no, those, um, it's called the, the water pole trainer. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. actually patented by Bruce Weigel, Wolf Weigel's father. Well, we, we use them and love them here at Olympus in Salt Lake. That's good stuff oh, that's cool. for sure. That's cool. So Jesse, you've crisscrossed the world. You have obviously five Olympics. You've played all over the world. What are one or two things that a club can do to increase their membership or to just create community support, right? To make sure the community knows about water polo. That's a very good question. Um, I do a lot of community outreach here in, in San Diego, especially in Coronado, like Janai does, you know, we are, I think always ambassadors for our sport. And, um, so I, I, I believe that. So I try to do that. Um, that's a good question. I think the first thing is, is you have to be a coach. So it depends. There's like tough different angles. Is this for the owner of the club or is this for like the coaches? However you so want to go. Okay. I would structure it in two ways. Um, cause it is different for different roles, but one thing I've seen that really effective is to, to have a coach that parents can believe in. Right. Um, so you don't have to worry about like the day-to-day minutia of like what's going on. You just know you're on track with that person's not, not their like beliefs, but like their, their feelings and thoughts on sports and the purpose of being there, like why they're there at practice. If you can match up and find out what the parents want in that community and match up a coach with that, that is super powerful. And a lot of sporting organizations do that. Um, but then you need to get the word out. You right. need the parents to know about it. And, and the parents need to know that that person's there. And uh, I think that's the number one most powerful thing I've seen happen. And then the second, Janai, you got something to add on that? What happened? I'll, I'll Why are you laughing, you Janai? What's going I'm, on? Why are you laughing? I'm watching we're in the you. same brain, same oh. brain um, length. Oh, okay. Because the second thing, see if you agree or disagree with this. The second brain thing wave. is, though, you need to have, you actually need to do it in like two different areas or three different areas. You need to spread out. And uh, a great, there's a couple of documents that have been put out about like starting sports or starting brands and areas. And like, that is really powerful to have like, partners you know so that you're yeah. not just you in one little spot and you know you have here this is one here's here's Janai, here's jesse here's Janai, and here's sean and just like this call you know kind of create that collaboration and then all of a sudden you get everyone in that triangle geographically you know like right. yeah, yeah that is really and even that creates competition and it just creates like it grows the sport it's so cool i would love to see that more and uh again reach out to Janai. On, 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 on an apparel <laughs> level think about a, a company like lululemon that yeah. reaches out to the community before they even launch a, a store. Then they do wow. a little pop-up store. So Jesse, if I was, if I was had that big smile on my face is we have, you have to have a coach that believes in the process and that are going to attract and retain not just students, but also families. Yeah. Um, and then we, I think we have to go out and think outside the box because I think one thing we can improve on is not just marking to our pre-existing water pole base, right? right? Reaching out to schools that don't even have a swimming pool and doing something on campus. I've had people throw water pole balls at me, you know, and just do water pole motions. Asante yeah. went to Ghana and started doing stuff yeah. on dry land before they even had pools. That's crazy. But there. Jesse and I were talking about doing something at, at um, Brittany's uncle's golf course, right? Oh, okay, okay. Oh, at, was, in the, okay, okay. Yeah, so do you want to elaborate on like, that crazy idea? Because no, even if that no. doesn't happen. No, nope. okay. I don't want to share that with anyone. Don't, don't share that idea. But if that doesn't <laughs> happen, I think someone will take an idea like that and do it at other events. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, we, you know, different athletes are going, Olympians are going and throwing out the first pitch, you know, as a water pole player, but at have a, a baseball or, you know, halftime at a basketball game. But I would love to see a water pole goal down on that field and yeah. someone maybe bat a baseball and try to score on somebody or do there whatever, just actually get someone visually visually get water pole into a much broader yeah. bigger market no that's a really good point because one thing i have noticed that's super funny that you just said is there's a lot of water pole goals throughout the united states at random pools but people don't know what they are they're like they're, right. you know, they're just like sits sit, there and sit people, there they have no idea what it's for um and and that is interesting and that was actually part of the reason for the water polo book um which is funny it's just like to for people to know like and we're obviously not it's me distributing them. So like, there's not that many of them out there, but 
but uh, it's a pretty cool concept. I'd love to see more people know what the sport is for sure, just so they can try to have fun learning how to swim. So I'm making a request from our listeners and viewers. If anybody wants to help Jesse Smith on a volunteer basis, distribute some more Wally the Walrus water polo books, reach out to me, jellycurrentgmail.com, <laughs> and I'll connect you with Jesse. I'm pretty sure that I've gotten a couple of emails that I should get like a fulfillment service. Um, so I no, think- but I think there's going to be families that can actually help yeah. with that process. We'll, the, we'll for sure put the order in the link bio. and. Oh, and no, well. you don't have to do that. Actually. Uh, I want don't, to. Don't yeah. do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Too many? Do it, no, okay. do you can no 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 you can do it. i'm just teasing please but do the, it. uh yeah please, no, please do it you know i would say if you want to reach out to me on linkedin i would love to learn about what water polo people do for work um because that's one of the things i like i was surprised like transitioning in um i mean now i'm working full-time but every one of us learning what other people how they've gotten there like that kind of like visualizing the same way yeah. like getting to the Olympics. Like, okay, I saw, I saw Lane Bobian go there. So I can go there. You know, I saw Janai go there, so I can go there. Um, and I grew up with them. So, you know, kind of the same thing with work, you know, it's crazy. Like all of us athletes, like we're trying to tra- transition from something we're super successful at. And like, it takes a lot. You start it to start little- kind of down again to get back up. Yeah. And even, you know, as you go through work, uh, there's a great book that Brian shared with me called mastery where that's like the graph, right? It's like to get good at something, you go down a little bit, then you go up and then you hit plateau and you go down a little bit and you get up. And that's like life. Brian Alexander, good work. You just, you just talked hey. about entrepreneurship right there. That whole thing, right? It's like trying to figure out things that you're not very good at. <laughs> so you, you don't even know this, Jesse, but I actually started working with Sotheby's International Real Estate. And same thing, like as no personable as I am, as much yeah. as I know about real estate, yeah. it's a new career for me. Yeah. Um, and so making it full time is a little bit unfamiliar a little bit challenging and the life lessons we learn from water polo of being able to make yourself vulnerable but to try new things to go ahead and eight beat in the deep end right yeah. like oh i got this can't be yeah. any harder than <laughs> raising kids and going to double day practices yeah you, you know you're either gonna sink or you're gonna someone so you're gonna <laughs> exactly sink. it's that simple you got two, two right you're the way, no matter what yeah. Yeah, you're going down or up no worries that's funny hey okay i'm not gonna i'm i'm uh, i'm not gonna bring another story i have another funny story but the uh let's hear it no, we need to hear Sean. Do you, Sean, do you have any more questions? No, they, listen, people don't want to hear us. They want to hear <laughs> Jesse they Smith. They want to hear Jesse Smith. No, I just yeah. want to know if you connected with Laird Hamilton. He's one of your neighbors out there. We should, we yeah. should just shoot him this podcast. So have you I, seen that guy around there? Uh, I've seen it a couple times. I don't think, yeah. I think he knows who I am, but we haven't actually talked. He drives around like those little mules. I can't keep up with this forerunner. So Jesse, um, I have a question about Laird because I've, I've been following his XPT stuff. Did, and I think man, at some point you so did I. that training, right? Yes. yes like, I that, think that is the link for water polo. This is the next like underwater, like strength type stuff happening. Is that, is a, that a thing or not? I don't think it's the next thing for water polo. No, uh, okay. I, I really don't. Uh, and the reason why is that you do a lot of that stuff in water polo already. Right. So I think that it's like parallel. So it's not, I don't think it's going to, I don't think so. But as far as, um, a normal athlete <laughs> agreeing with you. Yeah. Like, like athletes in general, yeah. I think breath work breath in a safe sure. environment, uh, that Wim Hof stuff, the layered XPT stuff, uh, being aware, doing some meditation and acting with intention. That is a hundred percent where we are in all aspects, right? Like right. athletes, employees, mm. businesses. I mean, yeah. we need to act with intention. It comes through some, some people say through your breath. Um, now XPT, I will say the one thing that's really cool is they strap a ton of weight on you yeah. and then you're in the water. And so the impact is way less. Right. And I think that the same way that yoga has, you know, impact over a range of motion. So it has like some some tension, but it's, it's building and reducing the risk of injury. I think that that aspect of XBT and the, the mindfulness aspect is right. brilliant. And they, Laird and Gabby are the people to do it. They are so kind, so right. generous. Um, I'm sure they'll buy a house from you, Janai, as soon as we send them this <laughs> to get your Sotheby's. No pressure, guys. No pressure. Hey, do you know Find who else right lives, Jess, you know who <laughs> else lives out here? Is um, Eric Goodman. No way. Yeah. So the found, goalie. The, yes. The, no, 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 no. The founder of foundation training. Oh, oh remember our trainer back in 07? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So he, he created, there, huh? yeah, he lives in Poipu and he no actually way. is growing his brand has become worldwide. Now he has practitioners, I think in like 20 different countries worldwide. 
um, all helping people with posture and form and relieving back injuries. Wow, that's really cool. Sean, let me ask you a couple questions. I just, I just got to ask you, do we have three more minutes? You bet, absolutely. Okay, so you mentioned entrepreneurship and do you have any employees? Yeah, I do. Yeah, okay. we've got, for sure. How many, how many businesses do you have or what's, I have no idea. So tell me, tell me. So, what. I, so currently just work, well, working on two different businesses right now. So I, I founded Olympus Aquatics, mm -hmm. which is uh, age group swimming, high, leads into high school swimming, water polo, masters triathlon, right? So we've, I've been doing that for about the past 10 years as kind mm -hmm. of a side gig. Uh, and then as the, I had left my corporate health and coach corporate health and wellness coaching gig that I had mm -hmm. helped develop and grow for 15 years, just before the pandemic hit, um, left my next thing. And I've just started game. I wanted to do something that I was passionate about. And so, yeah. uh, I've created game on live studio to help s broadcast sports across the country for, you know, and obviously water polo is easy because I'm very involved in that and coach coach yeah. water polo. Yeah. Um, but have but last week you were just doing mountain biking though. Yeah. Do mountain biking. We're doing a ton of like cycling here in Utah. So yeah. cyclocross, uh, we've got a big volleyball combine coming up this weekend. So we're, okay. we're doing sports all over the country. So, okay. That's cool. The reason I asked you is I, so what I got exposed to this idea, which I'm, which is so interesting to me is like working on your business versus in your business. Oh yeah. And I was just curious, like if there's any tips or how do you differentiate, how do you set it apart? times you have so much going on, especially with like where you guys are at, you have employees, everything. So how do you separate on your business versus in or anything to an aspiring entrepreneur that was a water pole player or anything like that? Any right. advice? So I think my, my advice is take care of yourself first. Right. And I, I'm do, I do that better sometimes than I, than not like, but mm. the, the mornings that I get up and do yoga and do uh, go for a run or go to the gym and do some strength work, uh, are, I am way more productive and I, I have to do a better job of like, I feel like I'm kind of working all the time because game on live studio rolls into, I have to go to practice. The nice thing is that th I ha currently have three of my five kids going to water polo practice. My wife is awesome and very supportive and wow. she runs the best like table of all time, like for games yeah. and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. And so it's, it's a balance. Like entrepreneurship is hard because yeah. you, it's hard to say like, Oh, I'm going to take a vacation. Or I'm going to take a break right now because, yeah. but if you love it, like I love it, it's like, it's not work, which is kind mm -hmm. of the fun part as well. So how do you have any advice for like, like water polo players in general? And for my, me and my Olympic teammates that like, as we learn more about businesses and business, and we have like so much experience in water polo, any advice about like staying true to your passion, but with that time constraint, with the energy constraint, or how do you, any, anything like diving into that for a second? Yeah. I mean, I think if you, um, I think you have to be very, uh, present for lack of a better mm. word, which is why, like, I've been drawn to the stuff that Laird and Gabby have been doing as well as being mm. very intentional of what you're mm. trying to do. Uh, for, I think that water polo players make great entrepreneurships entrepreneurs mm. because they know how to do hard things, right? I mean, we, 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 work sense, in, yeah. we work in a hard sport and you have yeah. the physical grind and demand of that. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, how, what work feels like, right. And so yeah, cool. the, the ability to work hard and to have that physical demand and have the ability to say, okay, now I also recognize that I need to recover, right. That I yeah. need to uh, yeah. take, take, uh, take 20 minutes, 30 minutes to like, just to reset before I go into uh, before I go into my next set. Okay. One my last question. Set. Now I'm going to actually, that. I'm going to follow up by on my own answer. Oh, you got something. Okay. Uh, Don't leave though, Janai, cause I have one more question. No, we we, we okay. got you, Jesse. Okay. okay. Um, is one investing yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah. Especially for water pole players that know how much hard work it takes to become successful. Don't forget that when you're going and trying something new and that's not working out right away. And then two, when you're talking about when you're working on and in differentiate the times, Okay, really dedicate some time to work on your business when, you know, it's after hours, wherever it is, but have a start and stop time yeah. so you don't get burnt out. And yeah. then also recognize that while you're working in your business, you're, you can learn to reflect on that and see what's working well when you go and ref, um, work on those notes of what you're going to do to improve the business itself. Yeah. 
Okay, that was funny. So my next question was going to be my last question, I promise, on this note. But for tonight, so for other players that have gone through transition and left the sport and then, you know, stayed in as coaching, come back as a player, you've done that a couple of times and then, you know, dabbled in business and gone back to business and moved. What do you, how do you find successful partnerships and who do you like to work with? What type of people? Like-minded individuals. Oh, Just like-minded individuals. Um, a lot of people look at accolades, right? Mm -hmm. But you really need to sit down, spend some time with somebody, right? Like Sean and I didn't know how well we're going to work together until we mm -hmm. literally sat next to each other in really hot weather, um, <laughs> calling, calling games and be like, you know what? This is fun. This is exciting. You know, Shaw's got the experience and the, the technical side of things down and mm -hmm. the passion for it. And this is who I enjoy being around because what you said at the very beginning of the podcast is your partners are trying to create a business that you don't want to take a vacation from, right? Like yeah. I have, I have, I was going to say kids, but we also have adults that will come on vacation back. Like, hey, I heard you start Kauai water pool. Can I play the beach water pool on Sundays with you? So people yeah. are going on vacation and still, yeah. they love water pool so much. They still want to do it. That's so cool. if you do something right. Yeah. Have you ever been to a, a dinner or something, come across another water polo player and not talked about water polo? <laughs> it's hard to do. Right. So this isn't a job for Sean. This is just a passion. That's really um, interesting. You know, it's funny that that's actually, you know, it's amazing about that. Uh, it is so, it's such an, it's so weird that it occurred to me, but a couple of really, really successful people that were water polo players, we only talk about business because that's what their passion is now. Right. But we are aligned on water polo, but it's actually fascinating because I, I geek out on the stuff and I'm so thrilled like the only reason they gave me a time of day is because of water polo, you know, but we don't talk about water polo at all. We didn't even talk about the Olympics because we were just like, it was really interesting. And but you're taking the same, uh, I don't want to say aspects. No, no, no it the, was, it's what you the said. Same like the same drive values. and passion. Yeah, like yes. yeah but yeah. no, it just occurred to me now because like, I didn't even realize at the time that we didn't talk about, about water polo, right. but I, I just think that was interesting because I, I, I agree though. It always comes up. And it's like, I was walking randomly in Dublin. Uh, we were there, I was playing in Istanbul, we went to Ireland and we were walking through and this giant guy was like, Hey, you play water polo. I was like, what? And it was this giant Mexican guy that literally was, he was like, I have a Mexican restaurant. Come on in. <laughs> and we who, go who in there it? and I can't remember his name, but he played uh, right now. It's in my notes. He played on the, uh, was it 68 Mexico city? 16, yeah. He played on the Mexican water polo team, the Olympics, the Olympics. And he had wow. three kids and he was so fired up because Tony had just done a water polo camp in Dublin. Really and uh, so he's married to an Irish woman and he was so thrilled and we got Mexican food. And of course, you know, we had fun. He, he was awesome. Wow. Like the best host ever. Uh, and it was because I had my, now I have my hair combed for you guys. My hair was crazy all over the well, place. Well, I was just gonna make that so, point. Yeah. Like you can't give up on the crazy water polo hair. Like that's like the, like this is a new a, Jesse. Or a, I was kind of I know. I, <laughs> it's funny because any of my coworkers or my teams or or if some of my clients see this. I was on a call on Monday and uh, I was at the USA Water Polo Golf Tournament and I stopped to take a call. I had, you know I had to work, yeah. so I, I signed on Zoom. And the clubhouse was closed because it was Monday at like two o'clock. It was so <laughs> windy that my laptop was like moving. My hair was like literally everywhere. And I felt, I felt, I felt bad. That's why my, my, uh, my, my, uh, my, uh, what's it called is on right now. The, uh, background, uh, because it was like such a distraction for the call, but they were cool. <laughs> they were cool. They were like, you know, we're happy you're here. And one of the things we always turn on our cameras to like, make sure you're there and present right, and everything right. like that. And that's one thing I learned from water polo, right? It was like, it makes a, it makes a difference that you all, you go the extra mile to, to be accountable, to show up. And okay. That's all. That's all I can got. Now you guys distracted me. Oh man. Okay, we took it all over the place. Thanks, we, Sean. Thanks. We, for that. that was awesome. Yeah. Well, I wanted to title this, this podcast, um, the joy of water polo and life with Jesse Smith, because that's what you've always brought to, to the pool, the deck, this world so thank you jesse oh so, man. so jesse one last question that i ask everybody that's what's, so nice what's you. your uh what's your favorite hype song what's the song that you listen to right before you play oh man that's a really good question i actually don't have a favorite hype song oh, um okay. uh 
that's really funny. But I will say that one of my younger teammates had me playing Cardi B's Up. And uh, I was... Up. <laughs> so that fired me up. It was pretty funny. But, you know, that's one of the interesting things is that uh, being on a team where, you know, I'm 38 and some of my teammates are at, sometimes they were 18, 19, 20 years old, other guys 27. And like what Jenai talked about where, you know, everyone's coming from other places, even though a lot of them did end up in California for college or for some reason. But they are, you know, it's a, it's an interesting group of guys from different different walks of life, and uh, and you know we bonded over over a lot of different things, but bringing us together, music I think was one of them, um, which is funny. But we just we spent a lot of time in the gym listening to sound. Remember? Yeah. Remember, <laughs> Jenna? Remember we, what we what game would we play? We'd always be like, name that song or something. Was it like? I mean, that was never ending. That was, oh, was unbelievable. Stop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing is like when you're with your, your best friends, you know, okay, in the world, you make games out of everything. Okay. I'm going to play a song and you guys tell me, you guys tell me. Can I bring my guess. lifeline? Because my wife is actually the best at this. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Let's see. You guys don't know? <laughs> that's Cardi. <laughs> yeah that was the song that i just i just did it on spotify i was just yeah. i was trying to trick you guys i'm a, I'm a bad person i'm sorry there, you're not yeah, a bad person i got you. you're a great person jesse John, you, you, great dad great athlete hilarious. great leader and that's what i actually really admired um being removed from you guys on day to day but you know hearing the books and the interviews you were doing to be a great captain so it wasn't oh my gosh. just being a great athlete you were really trying to challenge yourself um and branch out to be able to help lead this tokyo team in the past janai you guys want to hear something really cool yeah i i heard what you're saying janai sorry i really really appreciate that thank you it but, just occurred let's, to hear me, the cool, let's hear the cool thing no this is insane um okay so i'm gonna tell you guys a story um it's gonna take five minutes though are you guys good with that yeah Okay, yeah. then we have a hard stop for sure. Okay. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a part two of this interview. <laughs> okay, listen. This will be bonus content. So during the Olympics, one of my former teammates sent me sent me a musical, I don't know what it's called. I sent him a poem and he made it in the song to try to fire us up. And uh is this Hutton? No, but he's also Hutton's a very good oh. uh musician. This is another person that I can't tell who it is, but uh it wasn't him. And uh because Dan Klatz, Dan Klatz said I could play his um, remix, Snoop Dogg remix. Oh, no, <laughs> that, that's funny. Too. No, that wasn't. Hold on. Let me find this. This is the. Uh, oh, my gosh. This is so funny. All right, Sean. So you're going to have to try to guess who's singing or. You guys will never guess. You don't know. Maybe you know, Janai. It's not from national team. Oh, so but... then we. Do I at least know the person? <laughs> Does Sean know the person? <laughs> I'm, a, either one of I'm, willing to, I'm willing to guess. You won't guess who it is. Uh, okay, hold on. Sorry, I'm distracted. Let me find it. Asante. Okay, okay. I don't know. Look, no. Oh, he's he's also a musician. Okay, yeah. hold on. I'll take off my... Yeah. So, okay, let's see. Can you guys still hear me? Yep. We can yep. still hear you. Okay. Hopefully this works. I can hear a pin drop. Turn it up or put on speaker, Jesse. Can you hear it? No. Uh, okay, I'll just send it. I'll send it to you. But uh, it was so cool. It fired me up. It was, it's, He's a uh, now he's going through a folk. Uh, like he he's saying it, you know, pretty well. He's amazing. Oh. He, he lives in Nashville right now, so that's wow. the. And right. what instruments do you play? I remember you bringing a was a guitar to one of our national team trips, and the same time you're. Yeah, but I didn't know how to play the guitar, but the uh, and the harmonica too. Yeah, Tim yeah, Tim Hutton really did. That guy's amazing. He really knew how to play play instruments. He was amazing. But anyways, it was also, so cool. You also and, planned well, your wedding. Yeah. So like, what are you gonna do? What are you doing on the Wednesday we get back from from this trip? <laughs> can you guys all get ferry tickets to go over to Catalina and get married in the Grand Ballroom Casino? 
We're going to have to do a part two. We're going to have yeah. to leave it hanging. We'll see if it. anyone likes listening to us talk. We're going to have to pull the crowd. If you like listening to us, you want a part two. Oh, they're going to love you it. you got to email Sean or email me. <laughs> email or Sean. Janai. He'll email Janai. Or Janai will email Jesse. There we'll we get go. back we'll, to you. We'll, we'll connect it. That'll all Email Janai. Get a, get a part two all in right. Kauai. So, yeah, in Kauai. That'll be the live, next thing. Live in person rather than uh, we'll that. LinkedIn live. Let's do it. I'm in. That's I love that. Jesse, if you ever come to Salt Lake, I'll take you skiing. That's my goal is to take all the five-time Olympian uh, water polo players skiing. I can't. I can't I'm, I'm, not not I'm not officially I'm retired, Sean. There. Okay. I can't Never go. mind. Okay. That's all right. I'm not officially That's, retired. I can't go. Good, good to know. Okay. You heard it here first. Not, not officially retired. But if you are, we can go cross-country skiing maybe. But make, the, make that happen. Yeah. Safe, that was, safe for his stability for his knees. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I, I, I'll go. <laughs> Yeah. Have you guys yeah. ever gone snow? What's it called with the shoes? Snowshoeing? Snowshoeing? Yeah. I've, yeah. I've got snowshoes ready to go for you. Are you serious? Yes, for sure. Yeah. Size 14. <laughs> I did that with one of, well, they, they, I think you can use different sizes, right? Or no? Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah. I did that Janai with one of, I'm not going to say his name on here. You know who he is, but one of my, that Navy SEAL mentor, apparently uh, they're really good at running up hills and snowshoes. Yeah, they're really good at everything. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> well, I remember playing soccer racco days and you were definitely a land based. Um, we did some athlete. good, you know, I'm now a soccer coach. I coach soccer all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I love coaching soccer. I crush all the eight year olds. I am definitely the best out there. <laughs> well, fantastic. Jesse, let's end on that. We'll do part two. That's fantastic. Don't end on that. You didn't, you didn't cut that way earlier. Oh my gosh. Sean. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Janai, Sean. Magic, See you guys magic, later. The magic of editing. We can make okay. it happen. Thanks, okay. Jesse. Bye guys. Thanks, Good night, man. Bye.